folks, Jim Gillilan here. I want to welcome you back to another episode of ATAX Camo Gear Locker. Now one of the things we said we were going to do is start bringing you in the field and showing you a few tactics, tips, and techniques along with the ATAX gear that will help you be more successful both on the range and in the field. Today we're going to talk about a couple of different things. Number one, I want to talk to you about administrative loading and getting ready for either range time or for a fight. So. What I want to do is show you a process that I use that will ensure that when I load my weapons administratively uh, before a mission, they were always going to be loaded and there's no doubt in my mind that they, stay, that they are loaded and they stay loaded. Now to do this, I always start with my secondary first and I do that because it's my sidearm, I don't always carry it and so I want to make sure that I'm ready with it first before I go to my primary and that way I don't forget it. So my steps as I come through. Draw my pistol, lock slide to the rear, load my pistol, close, presence check, tap, and it goes to my holster. Next thing we want to do is load our primary weapon system. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to make sure that we go to the workstation. Now I'm putting my rifle in front of me so I know where it's at and I can work through it. And everything I do is from the same place. I'm going to reach back in my kit, I'm going to grab a magazine that's furthest away from me, hardest to get. I'm going to place it in my rifle, give it a pop and a little tap. All right, that's to ensure that it's fully seated inside and I pull it to make sure it doesn't just fall out. Next thing I'm gonna do is grab the charging handle. I'm gonna pull the charging handle back and let it go forward. And then I'm gonna come back and do a presence check. I'm just gonna make sure that I do in fact have a round on my uh, bolt face and at night I can reach in there and fill it. I'm gonna let that go, give it a tap on the far assist, close my dust cover, and again make sure I'm on safe and now I'm ready to go. And no matter what, I have just went through the entire process to make sure that my secondary and my primary weapon systems are loaded and they can do the job that I need them to do when I need them to do it. Always practice, always prepare, and you'll always be safe. Hey folks, I'm Jim Gilliland. And I'm Scott Peckham. Now we recently returned from the IWA show in Nuremberg, Germany. The IWA show is one of the largest outdoor textile industry shows that tactical gear makers from all over this planet come here to exhibit their upcoming tactical gear. Yeah, similar to the SHOT Show held every year in Vegas where we also exhibit it. These shows really are a great opportunity for us to reach out and connect with our current and future potential manufacturing partners. This is one of the ways that we help bring the new ATAC camo gear to you at the market. We're happy to report that ATAX Camo was well represented at the IWA show with lots of innovative new ATAX Camo gear headed to the market soon. Now, in our own booth, we exhibit items from some of our manufacturing partners. Now, these partners are include, but not limited to, Aries Armor, Tactical Performance, Proper, UR Tactical, Danner Boots, Tactical Tailor, and Tactical Silent Manufacturing. We also previewed our upcoming ATAX LE pattern and received great response from the international community. Now, there were several of our current gear manufacturers there showcasing their own stuff and their latest ATAX camo gear introductions as well. Uh, the folks like UK-based Warrior Saw Systems. Now, they've got a huge uh, new line of ATAX FG camo gear coming out. And there were several different kinds of plate carriers, battle belts, chest rigs, and any other type of nylon pouch you can think of, all in FG and joining their already popular AU product line. Now, Proper was there also showcasing all their ATAX camo uniform stuff that they make and you guys uh, know and trust. And joining them uh, were several new manufacturers that are making uniforms as well out in the market right now. And these are clothing items such as Leo Kohler. Also, the folks from Claw Gear showed their new uniform styles in AU and FG, as well as Poland-based uniform maker Helicon. And Rothko was also exhibiting ATAX camo t-shirts. Hey. T-shirts are one of the basic items that a lot of you guys have been asking for, and we're proud to finally have them coming out on the market really soon. Yeah, the guys from Voodoo Tactical were there also showing their line of AU gear, carriers, pouches, bandoliers, and packs. Several other nylon gear manufacturers were there as well, showing their offerings. The guys from Pantech were there exhibiting new nylon gear in both AU and FG patterns. Yeah. Now, as a lot of you know, Condor, uh, who is also there, has been making ATAX AU stuff for quite some time now. And you know, for years they've had our ATAX AU camouflage. Well, we're really proud now to announce that they're finally bringing out some FG patterns and stuff as well. Now, these were just some of the folks that were there and the, at the show with us and who were exhibiting some of their gear. Yeah, you can expect many new great products to come out of this show. 
Look for more information on these and upcoming episodes of ATAX Gear Locker. Or you can go to our website at ATAX.com. That's A-T-A-C-S.com. And until then, you guys stay concealed. Hey, I'm Scott Peckham with ATAX Camo, and on this episode of Gear Locker, we're going to talk about some considerations when setting up a, a fighting hole, sleeping hole, and some considerations when you're on a longer range recon patrol, and how to pick uh, the right location and what it should look like. One of the biggest things you have to consider when you're trying to pick a position to dig in uh, is that it has to be near water. Obviously, you're going to need you know, more as time goes on. If you're on a long-range recon patrol, you're going to have to have more of it. Nobody's going to drop you a water blip, and you're not going to bring a bunch of bottles of water out there. And you know, you're going to have water tablets and inline water filtration systems that you can use, but you have to remember that the water around you needs to be at least decently clean, too. And as long as it is, and, and it's running water, you should be good to go. Well, as you can see, we already got started just a little bit. Um, well, I wanted to give you an example of what one of these is supposed to look like. So, when you're digging your uh, position to sleep, you should also have a position to fight out of. And a lot of think, people don't think that uh, when they're digging a shallow grave in the field that they might actually have to fight out of it. Um, I don't really think that you're going to want to just lay down flat in it because you've actually got no cover. So, um, we'll show you a different view and you can see what the hole actually looks like. So one of, the, one of the things I want you thinking about is uh, should you take on any water, you know, where the water would go. And that's also a big thing to have in a two-stage uh, body position or, you know, or a sleeping position to where you're going to go at the end of the day. So uh, and if you can see this is, is graded down just a little bit and you would make it long enough that you can sleep inside of it and then also you'd have a hole down here where you can get down and you can fight into it. So if you can't disappear from it, like when, you, when you're down like here and at least be um, where your you know, weapon can be up on the ground, then you're not digging deep enough. We're gonna, we're gonna keep going and digging so you can see what this is supposed to look like at full scale. But one of the other big considerations you have to have in mind is concealment, because you don't want anybody being able to see where you're at if they would just happen to pass by. Hey, and just in case you're wondering where all this dirt's going to disappear that you can see, what we're going to do is we're going to level it all out. We're going to take all the little uh, sticks and leaves and other type of foliage and we're going to cover it back up. You won't be able to notice it at all. Now that we've got the hole where we need it, we need to talk about how we're going to conceal our position. So one of the products that is available out there to you is a water resistant bug mesh. And as you can see, if it's right in your cargo pocket, this is actually five feet wide and nine feet long. And you can see how, how small you can make it. You don't even need a pack for it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover our hole to make it flat, and then we're gonna start putting some of these other foliage on top of it like we said before. What you wanna do when we start uh, to put your netting across, your puncher, whatever you have, is gonna be um, you know, starting with one corner first, and the reason you leave all this there on the side is because you, you don't know how much you're going to need um, to, you know, to put it all in, in place, and then the rest you can just spread out evenly. So, start with one corner, you kind of just bury it just like this, and you put, push this dirt over it, and you're going to do the same thing, you know, on, on your first edge, and then after you get it all buried on the edges, then you'll be able to start stretching it out pretty easy. So all we're doing now is we're going through and we're trying to we're like leveling everything out to make sure that we're not leaving a big signature. If there's no reason that there'd be just a huge bump right out in the middle of nowhere. Obviously the woods are irregular and they're not always going to be perfectly flat either. But what you don't want to do is just you don't want to leave too much of a grade. So we'll go around and make all this flat and you can use you know, the ground to your advantage where there's little holes you can fill in. You can you know, push more dirt that way to fill it in to make it a little bit more level. That way, you know, your position is not an anomaly in uh, somebody's baseline, you know, what they know that their woods are supposed to look like. All right, so, so now that we've got 
about three quarters of the hole covered up, what you want to do is make sure that on uh, one of your edges, and on your finding hole, um, and then on one of the other edges, you, you leave a little bit of space for you to get in and out. So, because obviously when you're, <laughs> when you're going to be out on patrol, you're going to have to have access to be able to get inside of it. And then when you leave, you don't have to bury the edges of this while you're out operating, maneuvering. All you have to do is flap it over and then cover it back up. you've got everything pretty much leveled out, what we're going to do is we're going to start covering up so we can conceal the position. So all we're going to do is take what's right in your immediate area and you start covering it up. Alright, one of the things we talked about was you know, masking your sight, and this is another good way to do it. You can see this uh, big branch here, it doesn't really disturb any part of your hole. All it does is make another way for I don't know, the enemy or whoever to understand that there's nothing here. You're never going to be completely invisible, but what you want to do is mask your height as best as you can.